the story of, um, they still weren't called black holes. This is 1939. <laughs> and they had these very long-winded ways of describing the end state, the catastrophic end state of gravitational collapse. But what you have to imagine is as this star collapses, so now, so what's the sun? The sun's a million and a half kilometers across. So imagine a star much bigger than the sun, much bigger radius, and it's so heavy, it collapses, it's supernovas. What's left is still maybe 10 times the mass of the sun, just what's left in that core. And it continues to collapse. And when that reaches about 60 kilometers across, like just imagine 10 times the mass of the sun, city-sized. That is a really dense object. And now the black hole essentially has begun to form, meaning the curve in space-time is so tremendous that not even light can escape. The event horizon forms, but the event horizon is almost imprinted on the space-time because the star can't sit there in that dense state any more than it can race outward at the speed of light because even light is forced to rain inwards. So the star continues to fall, and that's the magic part. The star leaves the event horizon behind and it continues to fall, and it falls into the interior of the black hole. Where it goes, nobody really knows, but it's gone from sight. It goes dark. There's this quote by John Wheeler, who's like granddaddy of American relativity, and he has a line that's something to the effect, um, the star, like the Cheshire cat, fades from view. One leaves behind only its grin, the other only its gravitational attraction. And he was giving a lecture. It's actually above Tom's Restaurant, you know, from Seinfeld near Columbia in New York. <laughs> nice. There was a, a, a place there. There still is a place there where people were giving lectures about astrophysics. And it's 1967. Wheeler is exhaustively saying this loaded term, the end state of catastrophic gravitational collapse. And rumor is that someone shouts from the back row, well, how about black hole? And um, apparently he then foists this term on the world. <laughs> Wheeler had a way of doing that. Well, I love terms like that. Big bang, black hole. Mm -hmm. There's some, I mean, it's just pointing out the elephant in the room and calling it an elephant. It is a black hole. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty... Uh, accurate and deep description. I just wanted to point out that the, just looking for the first time, it's a 1939 paper from Oppenheimer. Mm. It's like two pages, it's like three pages. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's, the simplicity yeah. of some of these, that's yeah. so gangster, just revolutionize yeah. all of physics with, this, with you know, and Einstein did that multiple times in a simple right. year. Mm -hmm. When all thermonuclear sources of energy are exhausted, a sufficiently heavy star will collapse. That's mm -hmm. an opener. Mm -hmm. Unless fission, due to rotation, the radiation of mass, or the blowing off of mass by radiation reduce the star's mass to orders right. of that of the sun, this contraction will continue indefinitely. Mm -hmm. And it goes on that way. Yeah, now I have to say that Wheeler, who actually coins the term black hole, uh, gives Oppenheimer quite a terrible time about this. He thinks he's wrong. And they entered what has sometimes been described as kind of a bitter, I don't know if you would actually say feud, but there were bad feelings. And um, Wheeler actually spent decades uh, saying Oppenheimer was wrong. And eventually, with his computer work, that early work that Wheeler was doing with computers when he was also trying to understand nuclear weapons, and in peacetime world found themselves returning again to these astrophysical questions, uh, decided that actually Oppenheimer had been right. He thought it was too simplistic, too idealized a setup that they had used and that if you you looked at something that was more realistic and more complicated that it it just simply it just would go away and in fact he he draws the opposite conclusion and there's a story that Oppenheimer was sitting outside of the auditorium when Wheeler was coming forth with his declaration that in fact black holes were the likely end state of gravitational collapse for very very heavy stars and um, when asked about it, Oppenheimer sort of said, well, I've moved on to other things. 